everybody from I'm, so I'm from Cincinnati Ohio um, I know we got Portage Indiana here Spartanburg South Carolina South Carolina Sioux Falls South Dakota Sioux Falls Denver, Denver. Clearwater Clearwater Minnesota, Minnesota. Yeah. Denver Denver New Jersey Jersey Philly Philly Portland Portland Westchester New York okay. Westchester New York yeah, Chicago Chicago okay another Portland cool cool um, just a show of hands, how many of you guys are involved in City Dads? Okay, so almost about half the room, that's cool. Um, how many of you are involved in any kind of dads group at all? Aside from this one. Yeah, aside from this one. Yeah, like run to the end. Okay, cool. So that's kind of one of the things that I'm going to address in this breakout is um, just those who are trying to get things either going or how to just best cultivate that um, environment for in your neck of the woods. So one of the main things that I've been noticing through talking to everybody about City Dads is, City Dads is a big metropolitan area, but as we see like for here like in Orlando, it is spread out. <laughs> you know, Tampa is spread out, Chicago is spread out, Seattle, all that spread out. So you get guys who are like, I can't really connect sometimes with that City Dads group. And so I want to talk about what you guys are experiencing as far as how to best get something going in your neck of the woods to cultivate that just lifestyle that basically City Dads is doing, which is just trying to meet up, get things going, and have that camaraderie. So and I'll give you some examples of some things that I've done. So just a little backstory on me. Um, I didn't get involved in City Dads until about almost a year ago. Um, the group that I run uh, started out actually as just a, uh, a private page when I transitioned into being a stay-at-home dad. And I just thought to myself, if I'm going to stay at home, <laughs> I've got to have guys to connect with throughout the day, throughout the week. You know, just if it's a phone call, if it's a play group, whatever it is. And so I actually just built this group and invited all of my buddies who I knew were dads, whether they would actually come or not, I didn't know. And that's also at the same time I found this group. And this group was the honey hole for me because there were so many stay-at-home dads who are running city dads groups. And they got me connected with Matt and Lance and that's kind of how that all got started. But everything I did was a grassroots project. So I had all these different guys that lived nearby me, and it was just sort of like, okay, we're gonna try to do some things. I didn't really know what it was gonna be. So it's sort of you get this big idea, you're like, I want this, how do I produce this? So for me, like I said, City Dads came in and they kind of gave me like a little more momentum into my vision of, all right, we can do Dad's Night Out. Well, anybody can do Dad's Night Out as well. It doesn't have to be involved in a City Dad. You know, we do park stuff, we do libraries and zoos and things like that. And so we just kind of went along with that. Um, over time, that grew to where you would get, for instance, like, so how many of you guys, let's ask this, because this is one of the big things. When you go to, uh, how many of you go to like the library with your kids? Okay. How many of you uh, have interaction with, like, how many, how many dads would you say, you see at one of those at one of those library times. It's kind of real. Zero? Maybe one. Maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, this was lots of moms. How many times are you trying to interact with those moms at all? Any anything with that? Yeah. 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 It's a little it's it can be a little nerve wracking though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So totally understand that. Um, I will say they are the biggest advocacy. So you can fill it out when you're there. I mean some moms are gonna be like Shh. 
some moms are going to be a little open to it or just curious as to what you're doing. But that they're kind of a key role in that because if they're in something, you can sort of address to them after a while, be like, hey, like you're doing it, like what's your husband doing, like that kind of thing. And those can start um, some communication. Now, I'm curious, like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, so have you had a, like a negative interaction with some guys or some some moms in that? Um, you asked earlier um, about being in a dad's group. I have started a watchdogs group for those of y'all who were at the convention last year um, at my kids' school. That's really the only dad interaction I get on a regular basis. Um, most of my male friends married and none of them have kids but then transitioning these people from okay this is a network that is special specifically about the school to then getting these guys out and actually making friends with them has been a particular challenge and a lot of dealing with the moms I don't I don't know if they think I'm a vampire or what but I that they talk to me for a couple minutes. It, the, the only difference I've had, uh, I, I get along really well with the moms from my children's classrooms because they see me on a regular basis, they know who I am. But libraries, parks, I've almost gotten to the point that I'm just, I, I, I'm almost afraid to approach them because I've had so many negative interactions where they're just, they, they look at me like, who are you and why are you talking to me? Okay. Yeah, uh, and, and that is a common thread. It is. Um, so in that instance, for those who are kind of into that, where it's like I'm getting no response from the moms that I'm coming into, they're just completely guarded. So here's kind of some things I did. I got involved, that library that you go to with your kid, um, I got involved with them in the fashion of introducing myself to the librarians as to what I was doing. So I walked up to them and I said, hey, I'm organizing this dad's group, and you know we have these um, events that we're putting on and some different things like that. Um, would it be possible when we get to where we're gonna have an event, can I post something? Um, sometimes they have to go through different channels to get those things approved, but that's a way to where maybe you can get around like having that mom interaction, but that dad that comes in, or that mom that comes in and sees that, like, hey, like I didn't even know that existed. And that might be something to look into for that. We've done that quite a few times. We did that with Father's Eve, actually. I went in with Father's Eve and was like, hey, like, there's this big event going on. Can we do like a Father's Day books display and put up some stuff about city dads and Father's Eve? And man, they were gun ho about that stuff. So it's interesting, like, if you go away from like just like the, the, the moms that are there and go more towards like the organization, you might find that the tide might turn a little bit for you. Yeah. I have, I have something to, uh, to say about uh, something like that. It, yeah. I, uh, I created business cards, like yes. best to print or whatever, yes. you know, and they Super cheap. give you good, yeah. And so I have, you know, uh, a, a email address set up for the for my group, you know, the Facebook page is on there and just in me, so they <clears> have somebody to contact if they need to. And I, um, I've gone to, if I go to um, like a children's museum or something like that, for example, I'll say, hey, is there somewhere I can put a stack of these or can you keep some up here? In case somebody's interested, and you know, sometimes I get one or two people that way. Or um, if you're at like those mommy, um, mommy and me, or uh, music and me, your, your kid kind of things at, at the library or something like that, and have some on you. And, hey, you know, hand it to some dad right. that you see there. I've done stuff like that too. Yeah, business cards are a good idea. Honestly, they're really inexpensive, and if you're wanting to be able to not like. I found that it's almost like less creeperish in some ways to like <laughs> some of the moms to like be able to say like hey like I'm actually doing something legit I'm not like here's my business card you can give this to your husband you know this has got my information on it for them to be able to get in contact with us and if you've got like even just to to go on like Facebook and even just build a small page that kind of shows like this is what we're about these are the things that we're doing especially if you've already like met up with some different people like you could even use like. The, uh, the dog program that you got to like, kind of build off of that as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's another way. Yeah, John? Rock, something we did in Minnesota for the City Dads when we got started was um, we created these like one-page flyers mm -hmm. uh, with the tear-offs on the bottom. 
Oh, yeah. Um, they're like little, where you just strip off the, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And so the top part of it, it's, um, it was just something we created and uh, pretty generic, pretty simple. But we take those around, Chris and I go with a staple gun or a bunch of uh, stick pins and put them at coffee shops or yep. community boards are all over the place. Yeah, and no, that's I'd a great be surprised mm -hmm. when we get the, the meetup request because it drives them to the meetup page, which is what City Dads uses as, you know, for sure. their sort of platform, and then our Facebook page. But you'd be surprised how many guys see it, uh, yep. just, or the their wife sees it and brings it home to the husband and says, right. you ought to check this out. And, and I'll say too, from like a smaller standpoint, I'll give you just a second. From a smaller standpoint, like, so meetup pages, just so you know, like there's an annual fee involved in that. So that might not be something that's quite in your wheelhouse to be able to say like, I'm gonna put some major money into getting this going. But through like, for anybody that's not on Facebook, you can just build a email list and go by that route. So like they have an email address to go into. So when you get that, you're just like, hey, like, here's some information kind of deal. So you can build it up based on that to where you, because there are going to be guys, the, the biggest excuse that you always hear, and it's not even really an excuse, it's just this is their way of living. They don't want to be on Facebook or any of those things, is I don't have any of that social media stuff. And my response to them is like, that's <coughs> fine. Like, do you do email? Yeah. Okay. Let's go that route. We can communicate through that. More guys are open to that. And that's just a great way to just sort of like kick that door open to be able to start walking through and having that relationship with those guys. So that's another way to look at things. What you got? Yeah, so, so for me, <clears throat> I just moved into a new town. So yeah. I'm starting from, from scratch. So I don't okay. have like, you know, kind of a base group. So advice, I guess, trying to find guys, but also you can find guys, but getting guys to show up at something is completely different. You can get a big group and have zero people show up. So what's the best? Is it aiming with the kids' events, or is it starting off with, hey, let's just do a dad night out first? Because sometimes guys, you know, prefer the dad time away versus right. the kid time. But what, what do you think is the best way to start up and kind of break that first? I think in that, I think in that route, I think you go towards just the dad in that situation because a lot of times dads are going to be guarded towards like, I don't really want to bring my kids around some other person I don't know. So if you put it in the perspective of like, hey, like let's just hang out as a bunch of guys. You get to know me, you get to know some other guys, you start to find out, oh yeah, our common denominator is that we all have kids. Huh. And so at that point, you start hanging out and you're like, hey, like I'm gonna go to this park. Like It would be cool to like, spend some time with you while the kids are running around. We can talk about our crazy messed up life. You know, whatever <laughs> that is. So I would definitely go the route of setting up something where it's like, hey, we're gonna um, go to this sporting event or hey, we're gonna go to this restaurant, whatever it is, we're gonna go bowling. Bowling's a good one, man. I mean, honestly, most people like will go bowling. That's a good one to do, and where you just get out there and have a good time, and conversation just happens on its own. Um, I would also suggest for anybody like don't go straight brewery at all, like because if you go straight brewery without food involved in it, you're gonna get a lot of people who are like, mm, I'm not into drinking. That's not me. So try to incorporate the food involved in that to make that work better. Yeah. I just wanted to add uh, two things. One. Consistency is key. Yes. Um, so I do a Seahorses After Hours once a month. It's the last Thursday of every month. Um, on Facebook, da, 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 da. but it's a, an event that happens every single month. Rain or shine, people show up for some you know, we don't get too many people, but we always have a fire of some sort and munchies on the tailgate and just beer is a, a BS, a great BS in the session. Right. Uh, so and from that, like, so that's a really low key, easy thing to do. It's like that. So you don't have to go anywhere. Sometimes it's just as easy as saying, like, "Hey, come to my backyard. We'll kick up the grill. If you've got a fire pit, you know, whatever it is, like, just come over and it's an intimate setting, hanging out. You'll find that that's even a better way for guys to just feel that much more comfortable. Because too, sometimes you know, if they, your kids are around, they can kind of see how squirrely they are, or whatever. You're like, all right, like, they're just the same as mine. But I would, that's another way to go about it too. If you want to go kind of small and just like, hey, you find a few guys, why don't you just come over? We'll hang out, that kind of deal. That's, that's another way to go about it. The other thing I wanted to add is completely different topic. There's another great resource to get new people into your group is your pediatrician service. Yeah. If you have one of these flyers made up of cards that's talking about uh, your group or your website or your Facebook page or your email or whatever. Um, their pediatricians would love to be able to give dads and develop resources available. Uh, so if you have these little postcard-sized flyers made up, just add your 
electricians. You know, see if you can stick a, a stack in, into their office. Yeah. I, I highly suggest when you're taking your kids to the pediatrician or if they to go to like a specialist or something like that, like mention the fact that, you know, like, hey, like I've got this dad, you know, talk about it a little bit. Too. I, I go to the children's hospital uh, for my son. He's got some fingernail and toenail issues that happened like a while back that we're still dealing with. Every time I go in there, like I either wear a shirt because that's just kind of an easy way to promote it. But for the guys that don't, like, honestly, like, the biggest thing is they just know me as, like, this very active stay-at-home dad. And they're super supportive of it. And it's really fun to just be able to, like, have that conversation where even the doctors are like, oh, man, do you have a card? Like, I'd love to give that to my husband. <laughs> and that just kind of starts things up there as well. So, yeah, don't hesitate to, like, put that out there because you'll find more times than not it's going to be met with a supportive, like, yes, I'm really excited to see that you're doing My that. wife's recruiter, she's a physician, and uh, her recruiter heard about the group and actually yeah. died. Gave her, like, a whole box of cards, and she took them all. And Brian, who's also from Sioux Falls, he's over in the other room. He, his wife did the same thing, took him to her recruiter. So now we got doctors coming in, which is kind of the primary nice. thing for Sioux Falls. Even the recruiter, who actually gives them to other people, too. So if your spouse works somewhere where there's a recruiter or anything like that, that helped us. At least two or three other dads we've gotten since that started. Definitely, yeah. No, that's that's awesome because you're networking all that in. So, yeah. very much so. So, with kind of going back into what I was doing with growing this group and everything. So the group was just like I said, those core guys that were my friends basically. So once I started kind of pushing out like that, there was this group. There were other people that started catching on. So that's why I say like the Facebook page. And you can do it a couple different ways. You can do it as just a page where you're posting and nobody else can really like, they can't post their own thing. They might be able to comment, but they're not gonna be able to post their thing. Or you can do it the way that I started it. I believe you started it that way too, Nicholas. It's the idea of a closed group where you're giving these guys who are using, are using social media the opportunity to meet online and have a conversation. Um, there's a spot in there where when you're building this that has an about section where you can kind of build like what's the group about, maybe like what the rules are. We've all seen that in the National At Home Dad closed group page. I <coughs> copy and paste that and I edit just a little couple things to make it tweak to fit the Cincinnati version. And I put on there like basically that I'm using this from this page. So there's actually like a credit that's put in there as well. That gives sort of a backing for if anybody wants to come at you with, well, I didn't know that, <laughs> you know, like they want to bring up guns, they want to bring up vaccination, stuff they always want to start a fight in or something like that. You'd be like, nope, here's the rules. Like, here's your one warning. After that, we're going to have an issue. So um, that's something to consider as well. But when you get into where you bring all these guys in, ask them to refer their friends. Like, hey, do you know other guys that would be interested? So guys that you wouldn't have connections with, ask them to be a part of that. That's how my group went from like, 80 guys, which were the guys that I knew, to 250 plus guys in less than a year. So those connections are what bring in. Now here's what I'll tell you. So there's 250 guys in this group. That seems like a lot. Not all those guys show up to these events. So uh, we'll have an event and we might have like eight guys that show up. I think the most we had at a zoo visit was I think we had 12 guys show up with all their kids. It was the biggest circus show I've ever, <laughs> ever been a part of. I mean, 12 dads and, you know, 20 some kids at the most, like running around. It was uh, like hurting kittens. It was crazy. Um, but it's those kind of things that are fun. And then you can take that and push that out into the media world for people to see. So, for instance, how many of you have a zoo? in your city. Okay, find out if they've got a page for the membership for the zoo. And when you guys go to the zoo, any pick, like if you take like a group shot, put it in there and watch what happens. <laughs> you'll be on, you'll have to go escape to the bathroom for like 30 minutes or 45 minutes because you will have moms and people and be like, oh, I didn't know this existed, this is so cool. And they'll start referring people. <laughs> it's a done deal, like it, it happens every time we go to the zoo. And my Cincinnati is only 300,000 300, population, so it's not a big city by any means. Um, but I mean, just different, you gotta just kind of come up with these different avenues to continue to constantly grow. The one thing that you will struggle with in this 
is going to be burnout in the fashion of like, why isn't anybody showing up to this? My very first dad's night out was a complete disaster. All these guys, yeah, this sounds great. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be great. It's like, oh, sweet. I'm going to have like five, six guys. It's going to be awesome. Nobody showed up. It was me sitting at a brewery waiting on guys that said they were going to show up to not show up. And you got to battle with some rejection and some different things there and a little bit of anxiety. But it was one of those things where I had a few guys who were like, I can't be there, but they were talking to me a little bit uh, through text messaging. And lo and behold, the owner of the brewery uh, came up and was like, hey, like, what are you doing? And I started talking to him and he got on board. He was like, what can I do? I'm a dad too. I want to help sponsor, help in whatever kind of way. And those are the kind of things like kind of hold tight, like in those kind of dreary situations because things will come up or you'll come into a place where like you're constantly uh, being the one that has to organize everything. And then you get somebody who's like, well, can we do something on a Saturday or a Sunday? It's like, no, those are my family days. <laughs> like I have things carved out. If you'd like to do that, post it up there or let me know what it is so that I can tell people you're going to be there. And then that can build from there. Don't always think you have to be the one who has to plan something. And definitely don't take it upon yourself to feel guilty if you have to tell somebody, like, hey, I can't do this every single time. If you want to be, you know, stirring it up as well, I would love for you to do that. Post it and kind of go that way. Yeah. So just before you get too far away from the Facebook group, yeah. I tried starting a dad group a while ago with somebody. We got a Facebook group going. We got people added in. We were adding lots of people. But it was never active. I couldn't get any. I couldn't get anything going. I tried, you know, posting up about. First, I tried posting up, hey, let's meet at the park. Nothing. Not even like a like. <laughs> People saw it because they'll tell you. It's they'll show you they've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm not getting any uh, back and forth. I'm posting about maybe about parenting problems. Try that route. Nothing. I, it, I just can't get any interaction. Group. And then it turned into a community event calendar somehow from the other guy that was helping plan it because he got so frustrated with it. He just started posting everything going on in the community. Yeah. So. Now, and I've, I've heard your story before, Micah. And I, yeah, so the biggest key in that, um, the whole like posting on community things is definitely not to route the go. I understand his frustration and being like, there's the stuff to do. Like, come on. Like, somebody like messaged, like, oh, that's cool. I'll be at that. Like, but it doesn't really work out very well in that fashion. Um, so in those kind of situations, the, that's where it's sort of like a grind that you go through, which is really annoying. But I find that for that one, I started, because I, I ran into that situation, I just started posting questions like on a daily basis, like just asking guys to sort of, you know, answer this question, like, what do you think about this or that, you know, or have you dealt with this? And just to kind of see if anybody would actually interact with it. So come up with like sometimes some creative questions that might draw somebody in, maybe even make it like borderline controversial just to see what they do. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you might have to like watch how that goes, but I mean, um, yeah, that wouldn't get into that probably. But I mean, there's something along the lines of, yeah, you know, you could take maybe something you've seen in like an article and bring, pose that question to them. Or if you're reading a book on uh, parenting, you know, you could pose a question from out of that kind of situation. Um, I, I've, you run into those just kind of different areas where there's just lulls and it, it stinks. But if you just keep grinding through, eventually, like, it will populate. It just might take more time. What happened with yours? Like, did it just kind of fizzle completely out? Yeah, it's, it's, it, I, uh, I did post in there the other day once I heard that it was, once I knew the breakout was happening. Yeah. I'm like, is there anybody who's interested in helping me kind of take up the mantle of this and get this going again? And I got one person who responded that they will, who I'm going to follow up with. Great. But otherwise, it's only two. One person. Yeah, I'm hoping, right person. It's a new person, so I'm hoping to just yeah. close out that old group, say, here's our new group. Because a bunch of uh, different people were added in that didn't want to be added, and a whole bunch of other stuff at the end of it. So yeah, I'm starting a new group. Yeah. When when you were doing that group too, I was just curious. So is it's a closed group, right? Right. Okay. Did you have questions for those folks that were coming into the group to answer? It wasn't available when we started. 
Oh, okay. That's another, that's another thing that uh, is really good about the closed group is posing questions because it gives you a chance to sort of like vet and police a little bit. Um, one of the things like is really big is no joint accounts. That's a huge one. Um, I get it. They are, there are some moms that are just as supportive of what's going on, but you know, in the end, like we want just the dads in there. Um, but I ask things like, uh, you know, what kind of dad are you? Are you gay, married, divorced, single, trans? What are you? Answer that question. How many kids do you have? How old are your kids? You know, how did you hear about the group? That's the best answer. That answer right there, I kid you not, that when they answer that, that'll bring a smile to your face. Because you'll see things, you're like, yeah, wow. Like, I heard it from a friend. I actually had a mom tell me about it, you know. Or uh, uh, the best one I saw recently was uh, my Uber driver told me about it. Which, by the way, that was me because I tried Uber. <laughs> but still, though, <laughs> I, that's, Uber driving has been, like, my, one of my biggest allies for going out and picking up random people throughout the city. And when you get to talking about what do you do, I'm like, oh, I'm a stay-at-home dad. And I run the only dad's group in the entire city. There are 90-plus mom groups in Cincinnati, but I run the one dad's group. Oh, that's really cool. Hey, by the way, I've got a car. You know? And there you are. So either they keep it or they lose it and someone else picks it up. But for the most part, I usually get one or two every once in a while. What's up, Don? I can share when, when we got started, you know, we didn't have anything. I mean, we, I had my buddies and kind of the stuff I was already doing things, going to the sportsman show or whatever, different events. And what I think what made it real, and I don't know if this helped you or if you restart your deal, is whatever we had, we took pictures. Yes. Right? And we post a picture, even if it was me and two guys, or a, you know, a handful of kids, or, or whatever it was. Somehow the picture makes it real. Yeah. And with Facebook and all that, every time we post a picture, and then it just seemed to like uh, help really help things catch on. Yeah, definitely. I, so the, the the big thing in that with the picture taking. Um, so how many of you have used Instagram? Anybody? You? How many of you are like, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm not doing yeah. this. Okay, I, I will uh, take a page from uh, Bo Coffrin, <laughs> Lunchbox Dad, and tell you that uh, honestly, can reconsider getting on Instagram. Uh, it will be your biggest ally in getting your name out there to people. Because the cool thing about Instagram, which is different than Facebook, is the algorithm is a little bit different in the fashion of when you hashtag and you you basically tag people in different places, especially location tags, like, hey, I'm at this park kind of deal with pictures and stuff. You're gonna see different places around your community like that picture, and also, like, they can then, you know, use that to share that out to other people and stuff. So definitely use that because it is a huge, like, tool. And I've, I've found it to be very helpful. Like, because you can tag news stations. If you're wanting to do something and you're wanting to get the media involved, you can tag news stations and then they, could reach out to you to do a story. For instance, I was on the news for the day after Father's Day. I tried to get on the floor, but it didn't work out. But I got I got a hold of the station, and they were like, "Hey, like we do this live show uh, in the mornings. Would you want to come on and talk about the dads group?" And I was like, "Yeah, that'd be great." And so I got to talk about the dads group. I got to talk about how we had just done Father's Eve. I got to talk about how this group networks guys together who would have never met otherwise, um, and just all these really cool things. And it just and then on top of it, you got this really cool promotional video that you didn't have to do anything to produce. It's already there. And so if they are willing to then give it to you to be able to use, you can you know, pass it out from there and other people can see it. So that's a, another really hot ticket. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm running a building task group now. It, was, it used to be pretty strong. <coughs> it used to be a pretty strong group. Um, so we have the we have the meetup group. We have a Facebook page. Um, I haven't checked it. There's a fair number of people on meetup. Um, I think probably a couple of people on Facebook. Which do you think is a better platform to use? If you give, if you have the choice of both, if you have the choice. They really need to be worked simultaneously. Honestly, it's hard to give one over the other because, like I said, people on meetup might not be on Facebook at all. So you've got two different sets of people going on there. Um, Whereas Meetup, the one thing with Meetup is, is that the communication, some of the guys don't know that they can actually type messages you know, out through that. Um, but here's, a, so I would do this. Through Facebook, have your conversation with the guys that are in there. Kind of get something striked up, maybe an event, okay? 
once you get like a little bit of traction on that, then put it in the meetup page. And then that way the guys in there can be like, oh. And what you do is you have the guys in the Facebook page, make sure they're in the meetup page as well. Like that's the biggest thing is like getting them pushed in there. But the idea is that those guys are like, all right, cool, you're gonna come. You make the, you make the event, you throw that link into Facebook, you say RSVP to this. So that that way, and you let them know, you say RSVP to this so the guys that are in meetup that aren't on social media see that there are people coming and then that will drum up other people's attention be like, oh, okay, I'm not gonna be the only one there. Or that, oh, well, somebody else will go. Yeah. Like, you gotta kind of work both sides of it to make that push through for you. I found that meetup too that you can actually, I have like three or four dads that show up and then like I'm the only one that RSVP, so I now find out that you can actually add them to, went to this meetup too, and then like I'll have some people right. actually notice that too. Like, I told the dads now, you come and you're on my meetup and you don't put down, I'm gonna put you down. Mm -hmm. So. No, we have, you know, we have five dads coming. I was the only one every time for like 15 events. You, we you can kind of track who's coming. Yeah, yeah. So, so I finally started putting them on there and like you said, putting pictures on the page. I put at least four pictures minimum, even if it's a empty park with my kid on it. Right. And then it'll, 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 it'll drum up some people. I was a little surprised by that. But yeah. once I, once I started putting pictures on there, I started getting more. It's like, oh. Pictures are the key. I, I know some people are very guarded about how that works. You got to wrestle with your own on how you want to go about that, but pictures are key to let people know that you're actually being active and out there. Yeah, John. I got a tip from Brian Dykes in Chicago when we were new. He, he's a great guy. I don't know if you guys know him. He's not here, but uh, he told me about uh, Meetup because I've never used it before right. for anything. And uh, so with City Dads, they give you the Meetup page, they pay for it and everything. And uh, anyway, so I've learned how to use the meetup thing. And what he said is you can go through, it's by geography. So for me, it's like the whole Twin Cities or whatever. And I can pick through there. And he said, what you do is you look for guys with kids in their profile picture. Because clearly they're dads. Like it's them holding their kid or whatever. So if I, I would kind of scroll through the, the meetup community. Yeah. And if I saw a picture of a dad holding his kid. I'd click it and send them a link and say, hey, maybe you want to join our club. Yeah. And I got that done to a cut and paste routine that I could do like while I was listening to some worthless conference call or something. You know? <laughs> and I'd sit and just kind of pick through and, and send out 40 or 50 and those guys would be, yeah, great, thanks. You know, mm -hmm. you know their dads and they're proud of being a dad if they're including their kid yeah. in their profile. Definitely. No, that's 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 a, that's a good way to use that system because you're yeah you're kind of kind of mining for them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <coughs> yeah. How do you um, for an existing city group? Because uh, I'm in Denver, but I mean I'm actually South Denver, and my big problem is that there is all the events that are always happening for city dads Denver are always north. Yep. Yeah. And it would literally take me like half the day just to get my kids up there. How do I diplomatically maybe start a group for, for instance, like I said, of South Denver, yep. South Denver dads or, or something like that? Do a diplomatic where I'm not insulting anybody else for putting no, you're in fine. those groups. That's, right? No, that's a great yeah. question. Yeah, so think of it this way. So when City Dads got started, it was Matt and Lance doing City Dads. And then there was New York City. Yeah. And then they're in every borough. They're like all these boroughs, okay? Those guys don't all meet up. All right, so it's the same way. Denver's got all kinds of neighborhoods, right? I, I've been there, it's been a long time ago, but I, yeah, I know, it's a distance. Like, I, went, I was in Forest Park, I think. That was just in the south, I believe. There is no Forest Park. No, nope, no, 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 where am I at? I don't know, somewhere south of Denver, I can't remember. Parker? Parker, yeah, Yeah. sorry, I know something Parker. <laughs> like I said, it's been a while. Uh, so Parker, I was there, and it, yeah, that's a, that's a distance to get even into town for there, but they've got a, a little community going there. I would not hesitate to just get something going in your area, okay? You can work with the main Denver group as just like, as far as like, you know, insight and getting things going. Here's your guy right here for Denver. And so if it's something where, you know, you're just like, hey, I want to do this, it might be something where you can work together. So he's got the meetup page, right? Okay. So if you've got something that's in that area, you should want to collaborate with him to help push that so that that neighborhood is getting involved in it and do those kind of instigates in that. So, so yeah, that would be one way to do that. Because if you've got a community of guys 
that you're trying to get a hold of, you say, hey, join this meetup. I mean, Denver is Denver, right? But Denver's pocketed. So you're gonna be a south pocket to it. And here's your guy to work with and kind of move some things along. And then eventually, you know, if there's some like huge event that takes place in Denver, the big market, it's a big area, oh, you know, that's where you guys, maybe like there's one time a month or whatever, you like all come together for whatever that event is. Or maybe it's once a quarter you guys come together for that. And that's a way to grow the smaller version down there and also help the larger entity as a whole in the Denver area. Yeah. I was gonna say one of the things that I did um, because you know everybody says that in the groups there's a lot of dads that just don't say anything. Nobody communicates. Nobody says I'm going here. Does anybody want to join me? So when I noticed I had one or two people actually do that and they're 40 minutes away from me or something, I was like, all right, I'll be there. So I would go and travel that distance, you know, to meet this person for the first time. I created an event later and that person came to me or right. came to where I set up my um, you know my little meeting so you know yeah with the organizing side of it if you're gonna you know you're the head of it and you're kind of doing things sometimes that it might involve like a little bit of extra travel on your side to maybe reach out to some of those people who are sort of like flaying in the wind and they, they want to be a part of it but it's like you need to somehow connect with them and maybe it's something even as far as like they're an ally so Cincinnati for instance has kind of got a north south east and west to it in a ways Everything's about 20 minutes, but still even in that 20 minutes, there are guys who are like, I don't want to drive that distance even. And so it's like, all right, fine. Like, like for instance, so the northern top of Cincinnati is a place, uh, Sharonville and Westchester, and I got guys up there, and they're like, oh, we want to go to this park or whatever. It's like, all right, cool. I'll bring my kids up and connect with them and different things. And then they see like, oh, okay, he drove that distance. Like that might be something worthwhile to like come down to meet them somewhere else. You can do like in-betweens or something like that. But yeah, I mean, take some time to kind of knuckle through and maybe make that distance and see if that connection actually takes place. It's not always going to happen, but it's worth the time to, to try that. So, yeah. I got a question. Uh, I know, obviously, for a stay-at-home dad's group, but I've noticed in my community, in my general area, there's not a lot of dads. Not saying they're not active in their kids' lives, but they're not as outgoing as there's a lot of the moms that I've met. I've met a sure. lot of moms, and I'm actually really close friends with a lot of the moms. Yeah. If I get a group started in my area, or maybe you've done it, you know, in your area, is there interaction or, or kind of working together, co-mingling, so to speak, with even some of the moms groups, like moms and the dads? Like, if yeah. you've got, say, you've got, you know, you know, three dads, yeah, who are like, yeah, we're all down, and you know they're actually going to show, but you want to make it maybe a slightly larger group because it's we're all in this parenting thing together. I know, again, we're specifically talking about dads here. Sure. Um, is that something that you kind of? Go along, even if it's you know once every five, six, seven, ten events. Yes, yeah. I don't you know. think there's some, I don't think there's anything wrong with having that connection to where basically like you're like hey like you know my wife actually wants to be a part of this too in some way. It's like okay, so you have these events where you know you got mom and dad and the kids they all come together, and then also too what that does is that allows mom to see this interaction with you know her husband and these other dads and doing their thing, and, mm -hmm. and then from there like it's a deal where once that interaction like oh well yeah shoot i want him to hang out more with that guy or you know something along those lines or oh wow like i i get this time with these girls and so like yeah he should get a chance to go out hang out with the boys like you know whatever that is like definitely foster that because um that's a way to do that i mean i'll give you an example so one of the guys in my dad's group um he's really big in the craft beer scene and another guy who had moved from virginia to cincinnati is really big into it as well and where he was in virginia there was a family and brews group so you had families going to <coughs> breweries where there was food and the, the parents could get together and the kids could get together and hang out and then he was telling me like there was just this organic dad's group where like they would get together once a month and hang out which is basically what you know the dad's group stuff that is anyways and so he was like, hey, you've already got this going on. So like this kind of a flip-flop of what, what had taken place. Like, you know, would it be cool to kind of like launch off of what is going on here? Like, yeah, sure. So he did that. And last month they had their very first meetup. So they just pick a brewery and they all show up. They had like six families show up to that 
And some of those families didn't even know about the group. So he's also, not only is he getting these groups together, but he's also advocating because there are other families who are like, eh, I didn't know about that, or I didn't maybe want to get it connected with it. And then they meet him and a couple other guys who are like, hey, we're in this group. We've met Brock or whatever, or, you know, when you guys like that. And it's like, it's a cool group. We do this stuff. And other guys are like, oh, I want to be a part of that. So that's another way to springboard, okay. getting that going. Definitely. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions everybody got? One last thing, I, I would, yeah. I got to plug my deal, Father's Eve. Right? <laughs> I'll plug it for you. I'll plug it for you. The reason I think <laughs> it's strategic, maybe for the groups, is you know, Father's Eve is one night a year, right? I mean, it's, it is what it is. Right. But it's for all the dads, and it's uh, easy to do. And so what we do, I mean, in Minnesota, is we have a big Father's Eve event, but we have City Dads as a sponsor. I mean, we basically, mm -hmm. you know, there's no economic connection we're just swapping logos but what happens then is the guys show up for the father's eve and they learn about city dads so yeah. if they're the kind of guy that, that wants to join a club or be part of a group or something that's an awareness thing so father's eve is kind of a, a broad uh reach and we really try to reach a lot of people and then through that yeah. they learn about these other groups like city dad definitely how many of you guys have been to a father's eve event Okay, that's a pretty good number. Uh, I did my very first one this year. It was really easy. It was like, hey, come over to my house, bring whatever you want to throw on the grill. I actually, that guy who, that, that uh, owner of that brewery, I went back to him and said, hey, we're doing this event. Would you be interested in donating a keg of beer? Yeah, man, totally. So we got a free keg of craft wow. beer. I mean, wow. it was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so this, yeah. Just a different question off that. Uh, the meetup group, I actually created one about a year ago in Sydney. Within about seven months, a mom's group did get created, which is kind of funny. Yeah. But they're open group, and so like you have half of our dads, half okay. of our moms. It's a mom's group open. I closed our scrap down because we were getting more moms than dads yeah. signing up. We were working moms too. Okay. So I'm like, the, the description is at home dads group with these moms. I think that they're trying to probably get their husbands to look at that. Yeah. So should I? I it's closed right now because, like I said, I was having seventy members of be. 40, 9, 50 movie moms. Should I open the group up and just try to regulate who gets in there or not? I would definitely because regulate who gets in there. I mean, should I open it up or just leave it as a closed group and let them? I had the questions like you said, are you a stay-at-home dad? And then one guy you got in there said, no, 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 no. I'm like, well, what do you want to do with this group? Exactly. You're like, why are you looking at this? I have children. Exactly. Yeah, so So I would I would say in that situation I would say in that situation Yeah, that's that's crazy. No 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 no. Uh, in, in that situation I would definitely say like I would open it back up. Open it? Okay. I would I would open it up, I would make it some sort of if you got a lot of moms in there and you're trying it's a dad's group, okay? Yeah. So a lot of moms groups are very inclusive or are exclusive to just them. And you can just say like, hey, like love the fact that you're supportive and that's great. What we'd really like is for your uh, spouse, your your partner, to be involved in this, um, and so if we can switch that, and we're going to switch that up. So, just going to let you know ahead of time, like if you're a mom, you're going to get, you know, I don't know what the word is. I, I was going to say dumped out of the group, but that's not. Well, good I just said I'm sorry, I had to let you go. Yeah, 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 removed, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, respect, yeah, respectively yeah. removed from the group <laughs> they because this now, is a uh, dad's group and. Lost. We will have events where where mom and dad are welcome to come to those groups, but it's all going to be funneled through dad. Because they do have an email, and it's like, okay, if I email them out, they post it on their group, and all these other guys who are probably part of the right. group or same thing. I did ban that guy, by the way. Yeah. Just let you know. <laughs> <laughs> did you, get a, did you have to pull out the band hammer? Is that what happened? That was a little bit creepy. A little bit creepy. Then no, no, no. You have no kids. You're not married. You want to join a dad's group. I don't like you. Um, Definitely. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. I think that was probably what it was, marketing. You can earn $5,000 so, a week at home. Based on, <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. So, so, sort of, so based on everything that's been presented, and like I said, we've got, we've got small neighborhoods, we've got large cities, we've got that going on. How do you guys feel about moving forward with what it is that you're trying to produce in a dad's group? Does Instagram for me would be, I've been so hesitant on Instagram. Instagram. I just don't yeah. know anything about it. And, it's really yeah. simple. It is very easy. If you have questions yeah. about it, like, you know, there are quite a few guys that... I have the account. Here. I've just never done anything with it. I got the account before okay. someone else could grab it. it. So the other part with that is that if you've got 
the page yeah. and you've got your account Instagram, <coughs> you can connect those two. Oh, really? Okay. So if you do all of your posting through Instagram and then just and then just link it, Instagram and Facebook they're owned together. They're, they're okay. together. So Facebook okay. owns Instagram. Okay. So when you click that share, it goes over there as well. So all the hashtags go over also, which is really nice. But you get both sides of it. So I would, yeah, take a look at it, play with it around, you know, kind of see what you can do. But you'll find that it's highly valuable. I'm mean, social media stupid, and you know they're connected. So. Hey, I was too, man. Trust me. <laughs> but you learn fast, and there are lots of people that are more than willing to help out. And you know, you can, you know, ask within the closed group as this portion of it. You can reach out to you know city dads. You can reach out to me and try to answer things. I mean, there's lots of us that can help you. Yeah. I guess, so in, in regards to the social media, so when starting a new group, I guess you don't want to start a group that's already out there. You don't want to step on someone's toes. So where do you want to check to make sure that there actually isn't a group, even if it's inactive or hasn't around, you know? Okay. You so might set, so here's instead of a Facebook group, what if there's already a meet, you know, like, right. what are the spots you want to check? I guess Facebook, okay. Meetup, and you know what I mean? Yeah, you can search it on Google and okay, see who's right. there. That's another one. And sometimes you can even look and see when the last post was. I mean, some of them are just dead. Like, yeah, that's what I mean, I, yeah. That was a thing. Yeah, Micah. I was just saying, don't be afraid to step on their toes. Worst comes to worst, you can always merge together. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. That happened in Charlotte. You know, I mean, you guys all know Daryl Humphrey, right? So uh, Daryl's group that he had in Charlotte, there was another one, and it did take some time for it to happen, but they merged those two groups. So it, it can happen that way. Yeah, don't feel, don't feel like if you see another one that you can't, start another one up because honestly either one they've gone completely stagnant like I had a northern Kentucky dad's group that had like a couple guys that were in it but he had like all these other people and I was like hey I'm gonna start this group up just want you to know you're all welcome to be a part of it and I'm gonna invite if you're okay with it all the guys are it's like oh yeah definitely man and he just completely came in and it was awesome because then I had this whole nother network of guys from across the state line that would have otherwise not been able to connect with the, the Cincinnati group as well. So, yeah, start it up and go from there. But I mean, yeah, you can search it out. That's right. there's nothing wrong. Yeah. What else? Anything? I was gonna say um, there were some groups around the Tampa Bay area, and you know nobody was really communicating on there. Um, you know, somebody would post articles or something every once in a while. But uh, you know, at one point somebody asked a question about, do you guys get together? Are there any groups like that? And I posted. You know, I have a group that's that, that I'm trying to get started, and you know, if it's okay, I want to I'll post the you know the Facebook group in here or whatever. And if it's not, you can remove it or whatever. Nobody said anything, but I had two of the people um, and the same the guy that I answered this question come into my group. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean that that's also I mean they can always say no or delete it or something. I guess is the problem. Yeah, I mean, some groups a lot of times get started with a grand scheme of like, oh, Randy, this is going to be great. And then after like their kids get into school and stuff, they're like, I just got no more time for it. It just completely dies off. They haven't passed it off to anybody. And so it just sits there with that name. So yeah, that happens. That I mean, that was, that was big. There were others, there were other Cincinnati dads group things that were started like little play groups and they were completely gone. Um, Trent, uh, one of the guys, actually I have one guy from Cincinnati that came down here. We had actually not met until, <laughs> until home dad gone, which is cool. But um, he was a part of a group over on the opposite side of town. And uh, I basically saw his group and I just went in there and I said, hey, I'm starting this group up. You guys look like you're stagnant, but I'd love to have you in it. If you want to be involved in it, come on over. And like three or four of those guys were like, sure, I'm still active and want to do this and came on over. So yeah, I highly suggest just go for it. Yeah. Anybody got anything else? Cool. Well, hey, uh, I'll say this. So, uh, citydads.com. Definitely check it out if you hadn't. There's lots of good resources on there. Um, Matt and Lance are good resources to reach out to. Um, you know, if you're close to one of the actual City Dads groups, there's like 35 now. Uh, feel free to reach out to those guys who are running those and see if there's some way to do collaborations or get ideas on things. Um, but it's very easy to like get these groups going it's easy also to get really frustrated with just the speed in which it takes off. You just have to stay true through it, have the passion to just want to connect with guys and just be honest with them when you're talking to them about like why this is important, you know, like need camaraderie. You'll get guys too that'll be like, oh my, my kid doesn't even, isn't even able to run in the playground. <laughs> like I'm not going to come. It's like, no, it's not about that. Like come and hang out with other guys, like that kind of thing. Like I always tell dads that all the time. Like, just because your kid can't play on the playground or run around in the zoo doesn't mean that you can't come out and have a good time with our dads. Can I say something with that? Go for it. Um, 
my very first time I ever went to uh, one of the Chicago dance group things, um, my son was not even six months old or something like that. Um, and I kind of thought the exact same thing. I was like, this is kind of stupid. It doesn't really make sense. You know, they're going to a botanical garden. It's not like it's a playground. So I'll just push the kid around and carry him and, and all that. And uh, I actually met um, for the first time there um, Ariel Eisenberg. And uh, one of the things that he said, because I said it, I was like, yeah, you know, he, he said, like, you know, how, how come it took so long for you to come out and, you know, join us? I was like, my kid's only six months, you know? Like, I just thought that it didn't make sense to have him here and everything. And, um, and he said, you know what, these, these dad groups and these, you know, these meetups that we do is, you know, almost more so for you than it is for the kids. Because yes. you have to get out there and you have to interact and everything. Yep. Um, and, and even just doing that, that was the day I found out about the National Idaho Dad Network because the first dad who showed up at that was Al Watts. And, <laughs> Good guy to meet. <laughs> right. It was just like, you know, all of a sudden it was like, you know, yeah, you know, I used to work in restaurants and all that. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I used to do this and now I'm the president of the National Idaho Dad Network. And I was like, the what? <laughs> you know, so. And that was amazing. Yeah. And now, look where I am. I kicked him out. And take him over. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's you know it is one of those things you know and, and encourage other guys too, no matter you know how old their kid is, it doesn't matter. Just get out there. You know, it's it's more you know sometimes it really is more so for the dad than it is for the children. You know, definitely. So with that, thank you guys for showing up to this. Um, if you have other questions, I'll just hang out here for a little while. We want to talk in more detail, but um, I hope that you know you guys have. Walk, you're going to walk away with that passion of like, all right, like this is a lot easier than maybe what I thought it was going to be or something along those lines. So um, thanks so much and uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.